Hey, welcome to uh, another edition of um, Udell and MMT. Uh, I'm doing a series right now of uh, reading directly from the Modern Monetary Theory uh, Handbook or Textbook uh, by Martin Watson or my, my Martin Watts, excuse me, uh, L. Randall Ray and William uh, slash Bill Mitchell. And right now I'm on, I'm actually on chapter six uh, and it's uh, sectorial accounting and the flow of funds. We start off with, uh, first of all, if you like what you hear uh, as uh, as I read this, uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, hit the notification bell, uh, comment uh, and like, as well as share. And also check out more uh, MMT related material uh, by going to uh, realprogressives.org. Anyway, so uh, introduction. Uh, in chapter four, we saw that national accounts divided the national economy into different expenditure categories. Consumption by persons slash households, investments by private business firms, as well as residential investment in housing, spending by government uh, exports to and imports from the foreign sector, most basic macroeconomics rule is that one person's spending is another person's income. Another way of stating this rule is that the use of income by one person, that is spending, will become the source of income for another person or persons. In this chapter, we extend our understanding of the national accounts which record these different flows of expenditure and income. The sectoral balances per perspective of the national accounts brings the uses and sources of national income together. We show that when appropriately defined, the sector balance must sum to zero. We expand our dis discussion of stocks and flows, then introduce the flow of funds by, referencing, by reference to the sectoral balance. Page 84. There are many useful insights that can be gained from under, from an understanding of a national of a nation's sectoral balance. The sectoral balance approach helps us to understand the relations between the spending and income balances of the households, firms, government, and foreign sectors of the economy. For example, it illustrates that it is impossible for all sectors to run surpluses, that is to save overall or spend less than their income simultaneously. For one sector to run a surplus, we need at least one other to run a deficit, spend more than their income. You will learn that any of those nations which run external deficits against the rest of the world in order for its private domestic sector, that is households plus firms, to run surpluses, that is to spend less than income and save overall, it is necessary to for government to run fiscal deficits, that is spend more than ta taxes net, uh, net of transfers. Uh, 6.2, the sectoral balance view of the na nation uh, national accounts. The Australian Bureau of Statistics publication Australian sector or system of national accounts, concepts, sources, and methods, ABS 2014, it is an excellent resource for understanding the background and concepts that are used to derive the sectoral balance framework. The discussion therein uh, is generally applicable to all countries. From the national account sector balance framework, economists derive it or derive what is called the basic income expansion model in macroeconomics to explain the theory of income de uh, determination that forms the core of the so-called Keynesian approach, which will be in, which we'll see in chapter fifteen. The income expenditure model is a combination of accounting identity uh, identities drawn 
from the national accounting framework and behavioral theories by how flows of expenditure by households, firms, governments, and foreigners combine to generate sales, which is in turn motivate output and income generation. Remember that an expenditure flow, an yeah, expenditure flow is measured as a certain quantity of dollars that is spent per unit of time. Conversely, a stock is measured at a, at a point uh, in time and is the nest sum of prior relevant flows. No, net sum, excuse me, nest. <laughs> net sum. <laughs> I saw S there, but anyway. The accounting of aspect that underpin the income expenditure model draw on several different ways that we can think about the national accounts. First, from the perspective of the sources of national income, we can write uh, out the no, we can write out the sources of total spending that flow into the economy over a given period using the following shorthand. By I, I call it equal because it's three lines. Uh, y equals C plus looks like I uh, plus G plus X e uh, minus M. Total national income or GDP represents by uh, Y is the sum of national total final uh, final consumption expenditure C. Total private investment, I, total government expenditure, G, and net exports, or X and M. Note the following, oh, sorry, note the use of the ma uh, mathematical symbol, uh, the three lines, which denotes an identity that is true by definition. You should note that we have seen this identity previously as equation, uh, as equation 4.1, you might refresh your memory as that as 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 to that discussion. At this stage, we simply take these flows of expenditure as given and understand them to be parts of the national accounts of na of a nation. When these components spending are summed, they equal aggregate demand for goods and services in a particular period. Aggregate demand, in turn, uh, generates a response by producers, uh, producers, private and public, in the form of production, which is which in turn generates flows of income to suppliers of inputs into production. Wage profits, the wage and profits, the sum of those flows equals the national income. As we noted in, in Chapter 4, the trade account is only one aspect of the financial flow between the domestic economy and the external sector. We must include net external, uh, yeah, external income flows, or FNI, which arise from the, dividend, from the dividend and income flows that accrue to investments that residents make abroad minus the dividend and interest flows that residents must pay foreign investors who are financial who are financial interests within the nation. Adding to the adding in the net external income flows, FNI, to equate uh, equation six point one for GDP, we could we get the familiar definition of gross national product or GNP. Uh, six point two GNP equals C plus uh, I plus G plus uh, export and import plus FNI. At this stage, we could make the an uh, analysis quite complicated by considering retained e earnings in corporations and the like. But here we assume that. All income generated by firms and corporations ultimately uh, is received by households. That is, there are no earnings retained by firms. To obtain the sectoral balance form of identity, we subtract total taxes net of transfer, or T, from both sides of equation 6.2. That's in 6.2. And 6.3, we have an equation, G, gross national product uh, minus uh, taxes equals uh, consumption plus uh, investment plus government spending plus uh, export imports uh, plus FNI uh, minus T. 
Now we can collect the terms of, by arranging them according to the three sectoral balances. 6.4, uh, gross national products uh, minus consumption minus taxing uh, minus investments equals uh, government and taxes plus uh, export and import uh, plus uh, minus import, uh, import minus, uh, well, export minus import, there we go. Uh, plus FNI. The term, the terms in the equation 6.4 are relatively easy to understand now. The term GNP equals consumption, uh, oh, sorry, minus consumption minus taxes, represents total income less the amount consumed by households, less the amount paid by households to government and taxes net of transfers. Thus, and represents. Thus, it represents household uh, household savings. Left side of the equation, six point four GNP uh, minus C minus T minus I. Thus, in the overall net saving of the private domestic sector, which is dis distinct from total household savings, or S, denoted by the term GNP minus C minus uh, T. In other words, the left the left hand side of equation six point four is the private domestic financial uh, balance uh, S equals uh, S minus uh, I. It is uh, wait let me see it uh, if it is positive then the sector is is spending less than its total income so the sector is adding to its stock of net financial assets and it is negative the if it is negative the sector is spending more than its total income and running down its stock of net fin uh, financial assets more generally we define assets as items owned by the households and governments and non-government organizations which have value these include financial assets such as holdings of the money uh, holdings of the money of account uh, bank deposits and shares, and real assets such as capital equipment, land, and, and property. On the other hand, liabilities can be held by the same entities and represent financial obligations which need to be settled over time by some form of payment which may take a financial form through the transfer of bank deposits or shares or a real form, namely goods and services. Now that we arranged uh, equation 6.4, we can uh, we get another version of the sectoral balance equation in 6.5. Uh, savings equals investment plus tax, I'm uh, sorry, is actually uh, savings minus investment plus taxes minus government spending uh, plus uh, and, and minus uh, GAV, which I'm guessing is... Um, Consumption uh, and I'm not really sure what uh, CAB right now is. Anyways, equals zero. <laughs> uh, maybe it's balance. Uh, anyway, the term uh, TNG is the government financial balance or primary fiscal balance and is, is in the deficit uh, if government spends uh, is greater than government tax revenue and a surplus if the balance is positive. Finally, the other left-hand side brackets, bracketed term uh, X equals M plus FNI is a negative of the external financial balance, commonly known as the current account balance, or okay, that's what CAB stands for, current account balance. It is surplus, uh, it, is, it is in surplus if negative and deficit if possible, uh, if, if, if positive. It is the balance between the spending income flows of foreigners and the national and the spending income flows by the resident that go to foreign oops, uh, go to foreign nations. Uh, more simply, if the, in the if the final bracketed term on the left hand side is positive, then there is a current account deficit uh, 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 CAD or CAD. You had anyway. Um, for equation six point five, we can we can say that the private domestic financial balance plus the government financial balance plus the current account balance deficit uh, equals zero. This is an accounting statement. For example, let us let us assume that the inter, uh, external or foreign balance or yeah balance equation equa equals zero. Let us further assume that the 
private domestic sector's income is $100 billion, while its spending is equal to $90 billion, which delivers an overall surplus of $10 billion over the year. Then from the identity equation 6.5, the government sector's fiscal deficit for the year is equal to $10 billion. We know that the pr private domestic sector will accumulate $10 billion of net financial wealth during the year, consisting, consisting of $10 billion of domestic government sector liabilities, given that the external balance is zero. As another example, assume that there is a current account deficit of $20 billion so that the spending income flows from the foreigner, uh, foreigners to this nation is less than the spending income flows from residents that go to go to nations. Uh, at, at the same time, assuming the government sector spends less than its income, running a fiscal surplus of, surplus of $10 billion. From our accounting identity, we know that over the same period, uh, the private domestic sector must 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 no must uh, have run over over an overall deficit equals to thirty billion or twenty billion plus ten billion. At the same time, it, uh, its new financial wealth will have fallen by thirty billion because it sold assets and are uh, issued debt. Meanwhile, the government sector sector will have increased its net, net financial wealth by ten billion, reducing its outstanding debt or increasing its claim on the other sector. Mm, yeah, claim on the other sector, uh, and the foreign se sector will have increased its net uh, financial position by twenty billion, also reducing its outstanding debt or increasing its claims on the national resident or, or government. It is apparent then that, it, as noted previously, for one sector to run a surplus, at, at least one other sector must run a deficit. In terms of stock variables, in order for one sector to accumulate net financial wealth, at least one other sector must be in deficit. It is important for all sectors to accumulate net financial wealth by running surpluses. How can we use the sectoral balance framework? The UK sectoral balance is shown in uh, 6.1. Okay. Uh, repl uh, replicate the equation 6.5, except that the balances are expressed as percentage shares of GDP, not the balance of sum to zero. On this stage, three observations are appropriate. Despite uh, first, despite the contemporary rhetoric about the dis uh, desirability of getting back to running an annual uh, fiscal surplus, the UK has ra rarely done so. Indeed, only se seven fiscal surpluses have been achieved since 1960, each relatively small and short-lived. This is common for other developed nations too. Number two. Like a number of other developed uh, economies, including the U.S. Uh, and Australian, uh, Australian uh, current account surpluses have also been relatively rare. And number three, private sector balances have typically been a surplus. The limited occurrences of private sector de de deficits have been often accompanied by fiscal surpluses. Three annual fiscal surpluses between 1998 and in 2000, shown in 6.1 also. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're accompanied by current account deficits and relatively large private sector deficits, 7.3% uh, of GDP in 2000. Uh, the 2001 economy slowdown followed in most, uh, in, uh, followed in, in most, Advanced economies, sharp, uh, severe economy downturn, downturns typically follow a period when fiscal surpluses are accompanied by a large private sector deficits. Okay, uh, page eighty-seven. A graphic framework for understanding the sectoral balances for equation. We learn that the sum of the sector balance is zero as a matter of accounting. We can construct a diagram defining four uh, quadrants. Uh, figure 6.2 depicts, depicts, depicts the government fiscal balance on the vertical axis. Construct a di oh, wait, uh, axis and the external balance on the horizontal axis. You'll just have to trust me on that. Uh, thus, all points are by the book. Uh, all Thus, all points above zero on the vertical axis represents a Government fiscal surplus or tax uh, 
and the government spending at all points uh, on the vertical axis following the, or the origin to note the government's fiscal deficits, uh, G, G to T. Uh, similarly, all points to the rights of the origin on the uh, yeah, origin on the horizontal axis denote uh, external surpluses of X plus FNI uh, equals to M. And all points to the left of the origins on the horizontal axis represents external deficits of X plus FNI uh, minus M. While we refer, uh, shall re uh, refer to surpluses and deficits with respect to these sectoral balances, these balances should be understood as being expressed as shares of GDP. Clearly, the origin, the origin of both axes denotes a positive where all balances are equal to zero from equation 6.5. We also know that when the private domestic balance is zero, S equals one, or sorry, S equals I, then the uh, savings minus uh, investment, just so you know, then the government fiscal, de uh, fiscal deficit or surplus will equal the external deficit or surplus from, fig uh, from figure 6.2 the diagonal 45, 45 degree line thus shows all combinations of, of government fiscal balances and external balances when the private domestic balance is zero uh, savings uh, equals uh, investment. We will refer to this as the S1 line, uh, SI line, the side line, there we go. Uh, we use the knowledge to determine the segments of the diagram where the private domestic balance is in surplus. And, and in deficit, the to make easier we will make it easier we will uh, use equation six point four, rewritten in this way. Six point six, uh, savings uh, savings savings minus investment equals government minus taxes, plus uh, export uh, minus imports plus F uh, F I N I. Uh, equals uh, government uh, spending minus taxes uh, plus GAB, which I uh, forgot what that stands for now, but anyway, uh, where GDP, um, uh, where GDP, uh, GNP, excuse me, minus C, minus T, uh, minus S, and CAB, uh, uh, minus X in no, sorry, uh, equals X minus M plus FNI. This isolates the private domestic balance on the left hand side. We need to identify combinations of the fiscal and external sector balances which yield the private domestic surpluses deficit or yeah, deficit. Uh, at points A and C in figure 6.3, there is a private domestic balance point, uh, point B corresponds to uh. Fiscal uh, deficit uh, G uh, G greater T and external balances of CAB uh, still can't remember that the CAB stands for right now but anyway uh, equals zero. Uh, thus, the private sector must be engaged in a positive uh, net net savings S and S one then follow then between private uh, point uh, private excuse me, uh, points B and A and also B and C net savings by the private sector is falling until uh, private domestic balance is achieved at points A and C respectively. Be right back. Hello and welcome back. Uh, we are continuing on with uh, we can generalize. generalize uh, but, but we are still we are still on eighty eight, uh, chapter six, I believe. Uh, we can gener generalize this knowledge and conclude that all points about forty five degree line in uh, and line on each side of the vertical axis corresponds to private domestic sector deficits, and all points below the forty five degree uh, line on each on each side. Uh, the vertical axis correspond to private domestic sector uh, domestic sector surpluses. Consider points B, for example, which can uh, correspond to the private domestic surplus, whereas points A and C correspond to the private domestic balance. 
The graphical framework thus allows us to examine the, the implications of different policy options options for in a sovereign currency issuing government, all combinations of the sector balance represented by the uh, points <clears throat> in the four quadrants are permissible. With private sector spending and saving deci uh, decisions combining with the flows of income arising from trade with the external sector uh, driving national income, the government sector can allow its balance to adjust to whatever magnitude is required to maintain full employment and price stability. For, for example, if the external account is in deficit and the private domestic uh, sector is saving overall, then the drain on aggregate demand would require the government to run a deficit of sufficient size to ensure that Total spending is sufficient to absorb the real productivity, uh, pr productive capacity available in the economy. Alternatively, the external account might be sur uh, might be in surplus, which would add to aggregate demand, while the private domestic sector might be spending more than it is earning, that is, in deficit overall. In other situations, the government would have to ensure in, uh, ensure it ran a surplus of sufficient size to ensure that the, econ the economy did not overheat uh, and exhaust its productive capacity. The strong economy would be associated with the robust tax revenue growth which would help the government achieve its surplus. Discretionary adjustments in spending and taxation rates might also be required. But while these combinations of se sectoral balance are permi uh, permissive, uh, permissive? Uh, permissible, there we go, we know that, there, that the private domestic uh, sector cannot sustain uh, deficits per uh, permitted. This is because the flows of uh, spending, while deli uh, which deliver deficits, must be funded, as we learned earlier when we considered stocks and flows. See also the discussion in sector six point four, section excuse me six point four private domestic deficits ultimately uh, manifest in an increasing stock of debt being held on the private domestic sector's balance sheet. This process of debt accumulation is limited because at some points the susceptibility of the balance sheet to the cyclical movements, for example, rising unemployment increases and the risk of default rises. In some historical instances, this process has collapsed after serious debt defaults occurred, for example, in the early months of the global financial crisis in uh, 2007-8. Uh, at, at other times, the private sector starts to reduce the uh, precautionous, uh, precautionous, Pre precautionous, I, I guess, uh, of its balance sheet by pr reducing spending and increasing savings to bring the debt and uh, it is carrying down to a more sustainable level. This will show a, uh, economic growth unless it is matched by increased spending by the government uh, or foreign sector. In the long term, the only sustainable position is for the private domestic sector to be in surplus. And the economy uh, can absorb deviations from, the, from that position, but only for short periods. And 6.4, uh, figure 6.4 shows that we might define it, and we don't, might define as the sustainable space available to governments that, that issue their own currency Note that this excludes permanent private sector deficits, which uh, which are unsustainable. Sorry for the lack of air. Uh, now imagine the government is forced to operate under a fiscal rule that bans fiscal deficits greater than three percent of GDP, as shown. And okay, so it's shown in, in the figure. Uh, the formation of the European Economy, Economic and Monetary Union Eurozone introduced just such a, such a fiscal rule under a stability and growth pact. The aim was to restrict the capacity of each member state to, re to run government f uh, fiscal deficits. What does this, such a fiscal mean rule mean for both permissible and sustainable spaces available to a macroeconomic policymaker? 
clearly any point above the 3% of GDP fiscal deficit in line, uh, line in figure 6.5 is permissible. However, using the same logic as before, the sustainable space requires that the private domestic sector be in surplus overall, even, through, even though short-term deviation from this can occur from time to time. Figure 6.5 shows a sustainable space for each for such an economy. The combination of gray and blue areas, the, the blue shaded area shows a sustainable space available to policymakers and nations that run external surpluses. The gray shade, shaded area shows a sustainable, wait a minute, uh, the gray area shows the shows the sustainable space available for policymakers and nations that run external deficits. That's the the space policy that the policy space, excuse me, that governments have to co uh, have to operate within when fiscal rules are imposed is very limited re relative to the options available to a so to a sovereign currency issuing government operating without any direct uh, quantitative restrictions on the de deficits that they can run. Why is this important? And uh, an unconstrained government can always utilize the available space to ensure. Aggregate demand is sufficient to maintain full employment and price stability. By definition, not every nation can run the external uh, surplus because an external surplus is one nation has to match, be matched by external deficits and other uh, deficits in other nations. While the external surpluses or surplus nations have more policy flexibility, when, when, when operating under a fiscal rule of the type shown in 6.5 the fact remains that the allowable fiscal deficit may be insufficient to maintain the aggregate demand necessary to sustain full employment the policy of flexibility facing nations which run external deficits and simultaneously have to operate under fiscal rules becoming even more restrictive as shown in 6.5 by the uh, small green triangle when such an economy experienced negative uh, economic shock, the significant, uh, the significant enough to drive their the private sector to reduce its spending and target a sectoral surplus, the extent to which the fiscal surplus or deficit can be used to absorb loss of overall aggregate demand is very limited. It is highly likely that such an economic, such an economy will experience enduring recessions as a result of the artificial fiscal rules or restrictions that are placed on its government. Note that such a situation befell Greece and some other Mediterranean European nations after the G GF uh, GFC impacted. Note that uh, uh, the figure 6.2 to 6.5 show the feasible combination are combinations of sectoral balance under the constraint and unconstrained scenarios, but do not show which combinations are associated with full employment. However, the the imp the imposition of fiscal rules restricts the government from achieving these goals and makes a predetermined fiscal outcome the target of macroeconomics or macroeconomic policy rather than the more significant macroeconomic objectives of full employment and uh, price stability. The lesson here is that the government should never specifically target any particular fiscal outcome, but rather should target employment growth and price level stability. 6.3, revisiting stocks and flows. Flows, in this sector, in this, I always want to say sector, in this section, we what we uh, we re-examined the concepts of stock and flow variables, which were briefly outlined in Chapter One. This will enable us to clear to clearly set out the relationships between deficit spending and savings, and between fin financial deficits and debt. This section clarifies that that these fundamental uh, accounting relationships. Flow variable, variables are measured over time. The simplest example is personal income, which can be stated as $10, $10 per hour or $400 a week or $20,000 a year. The important policy is that without a clear statement of the time, 
component, any statement about a flow is incomplete and somewhat meaningless. If one says uh, if one says one's income is one hundred dollars, we need to know whether this is per hour, per day, or per week, or per year to make sense of it. It is also useful to work with the growth with the growth of flow variables. Uh, just a little bit. There we go. Uh, where was I at? Uh, da, da, da. Where was that? <laughs> Uh, da, da, okay, so okay, we need to know whether the that that is per week. Okay, uh, it is also useful to work within the growth of flow variables after calculating an annual growth rates. For example, your employer may offer a labor uh, a labor contract that provides for an annual cost of living increases equal to four percent per year. And the first in the first year we would receive twenty thousand dollars, while in the second year you would receive a wage increase income. A twenty thousand eight hundred or twenty thousand plus four percent of of twenty thousand, which is equal to eight hundred. What flows? When we speak of the flow of a of a river, it is obviously water that is flowing measured uh, measured in terms of thousands of cubic meters per second. However, it is not so clear what a flow what is flowing when we d discuss flows of income and expenditures. For example, what flows is to provide a wage income equal to twenty thousand per year. The simple answer is dollars. You work for your employer for eight hours a day, five days a week. After two weeks, you receive an electronic transfer for the sum of eight hundred dollars. Ignoring here for simplicity, any possible deductions for taxes or and benefits. Even on payday, it is difficult to think of the electronic transfer as the dollars that we were. That, that were flowing while you were working. As we see in chapter nine, the as we will see in chapter nine, rather, the payment say the payment say in the form of electronic transfer is just an IOU issued by your employer's bank that is denominated by your nation's money of account. Dollar in ex uh, in exa uh, in our example. In fact, we can conceive your work for hourly wages as an Im implicit accumulation of the I IOUs of your employer over the course of the two weeks during which you worked. You earned a flow of wages equal to $10 for an hour of work to receive in the form of an explicit, implicit a promise from your employer to pay you in dollars at the end of the two week period. Indeed, the, the, in the event of a dispute, the court system would recognize a legal obligation of your employer to pay dollars to you for your hours worked. In this sense, we can think of each hour worked leading to your accumulation of the IOUs of your employer as being denominated in dollars. One payday, your employer extinguishes the IOUs by delivering to you funds transferred for the total obligation accumulated over the two-week period. Two important conclusions to, uh, conclusions follow from this example. Those are mentioned are mentioned excuse me, measured in terms of money. The money of accounts is how we measure flows of income or spending. The associated flow of currency can take the physical form of notes and coins. Be equally can buy, but equally can be electronic deposit, say in the private bank account. Thus, in the contrast to a flow of water. The flows of spending or, or income do not always take a physical form. As we will explore later, me, uh, metal coin, coins and paper currency are nothing more than government's IOUs denominated in the money of account. While government currency uh, differs in some respects from the uh, implicit IOUs that you, you accumulate against uh, your employer, all share the common characteristics that are IOUs denominated uh, in dollars. We also need to differentiate, differentiate, differentiate. There we go. Between flows of income and spending de denominated in the money of account, from the associated flows of, of labor, services, and consumer goods and services. In principle, consumer goods and services are used up in says to satisfy the needs and the desires of households. However, a consumption purchases made. This week could include goods that will be used for many months or even years. 
Economists typically record consumption at the time that per at the time the purchase is made and at the dollar value of the purchase, even while recognizing that goods and services purchase might provide a stream of satisfaction over a long period of time. Now stocks. Stocks. Flows accumulate as stocks. The flow of water as the stream can be accumulated in a reservoir behind a dam or in the cup we dip into the stream. The stock of water is then the number of cubic meter, uh, meters, <laughs> meters, <laughs> meters in the reservoir or the half liter in the cup. Unlike a flow, a stock can be measured without reference to a time period because it exists at a point in time. We can measure the stock of water uh, in a lake at noon on the last day of the summer as 1.5 billion cubic meters and at noon on the last day of the following winter as 2.0 meter cubic meters, uh, cubic meters, billion cubic meters. Jeez. Because the stock has increased, we can surmise, surmise at, that the sun, sun, um, the inflow, there we go, of uh, water during the passing of six months has been greater than the outflow of water over the, that period by an amount of 0 0.5 billion cubic meters. Let us continue to assume that you receive a biweekly wage payment in the form of electronic transfer for eight thousand for eight hundred twenty-five dimes a year. For a total uh, annual income of twenty thousand, note the slight inaccuracy with respect to standard calendar year. We want to keep the numbers easy. On each payday, the electronic transfer uh, appears in your uh, in your bank account, increasing your deposit by eight hundred. Your account deposit represents a portion of your wealth held in the form of financial asset of a financial asset, which is a claim on your bank. We examine the pro properties of value assets in Chapter 10. Because wealth is measured at a, at a point in time, it is stock vi vi variable. There we go. In addition to your bank account, you might also hold other forms of financial wealth, stocks and bonds, currency in your pocket, and other types of bank deposits as well as real wealth, a car, real estate, a business firm, art, jewelry. Again, these are all stock variables, while whose value is measured in terms of the money of account at the time, or at the point in time. Once you have received the 800 transfer, you begin to draw down your bank account and finance, and finance your purchase. Let us assume that you annually consume uh, uh, will be 18000 for the year, comprising a purchase of consumer goods, fuel, uh, food for your automobile, clothing, uh, consumer services, uh, service inter uh, entertainment, medical care, uh, legal services. Hence, between wage payments, you spend a total of 720 for consumption, drawing down your bank account by, uh, by that amount uh, in financial uh, finance these purchases. To financial to finance these purchases over the year your flow of wage income has been equal to a twenty thousand dollars or two twenty thousand and you have spent eighteen thousand of that on consumption right, on dollar value and income that has has not been spent over the period oh my bad i actually did uh, miss one okay so uh, after the 18000 of that on consumption, your flow of saving over the year is also equal to 2000 Because savings is because saving is defined as the, resi the residue, wait, as the yeah, residual, not residue, but residual dollar value of income that has not, that has not been spent over the period. This will accumulate as an addition, addition to your stocks of wealth if you allow the funds to accumulate in your bank uh, account, which we will initially assume does not earn interest, the annual addition to your financial wealth will be two thousand. Alternatively, you could you could purchase interest earnings bonds, which is another form of financial wealth. It's in wait, and yeah. Um, in this case, however, you will also have a flow of interest earnings in addition to your labor uh, income. The flow of interest income, uh, let us say, is amount uh, let, let us say it amounts to two hundred over 
the course of the year uh, will also add to your stock of financial wealth so that the total addition addition to your stock of financial wealth will be 2200 over the year. However, there are many other possible uses uses of your saving flow. You might decide to buy stocks or other kinds of financial assets, or you might purchase real estate, real assets, a classic car, real estate, or equipment for your family business, family's business. Your saving decision can be uh, can be analyzed as a two-step uh, process. First, as a decision to withhold a portion of your income flow from spending, and second, a decision to decision as to form uh, in which your wealth will be accumulated. As income flow is first realized as an accumulation of IOUs, normally claims uh, on the bank in the form of deposit, form of a deposit that is the that in the second step is used to purchase as asset, which might be another financial IOU. Uh, or a real a real asset. One person's financial asset is another financial uh, another another's financial liability. It is a fundamental principle of accounting that for every financial assets asset there is an equal and offsetting financial liability. The bank deposit account is a household's financial asset off, uh, offset offset by the bank's liability or IOU. A government or a corporate bond is a household asset, but represents the liability of the you of the issuer, either the government or the corporation. The household probably has some liabilities too, such as student loans, a home mortgage, or a core or a core a car loan a car loan. These are held as assets by the creditor, which Liabilities too, such as uh, wait, uh, could be a bank, uh, could be a bank, or any other any of the number of types of financial institutions, including pension funds, hedge funds, or insurance companies. A household's net financial wealth is equal to the sum of all its financial assets, equal to its financial wealth, less than the sum, uh, less the sum of its financial liabilities. All of the all of the money denominated in IOUs is insured. If the overall sum is positive, the household has positive net financial wealth. Examples of stocks includes uh, include stock of capital and inventories, financial wealth, and net worth. Inside wealth version out in version versus outside wealth. It is also useful to distinguish between types of sectors in the economy. The most basic dis distinction is between the public sector, including all levels of government, and the domestic private sector, households, and firms. Note that are simplified, simplifying by excluding the, the foreign sector is that the economy were completely closed to trade and f capital flows. If we were to take all the privately issued financial assets and liabilities, it is a matter of logic that the sum of financial assets must equal the sum of financial liabilities. In other words, net financial wealth would have to be zero if we considered any, or sorry, considered uh, only private sector IOUs. This is sometimes called inside wealth because it is inside the private sector. In order for the private sector as a whole to accumulate net financial wealth, the inflow must be in the form of an outside wealth, that is, financial claims on another sector. Given our basic division between the public sector and the domestic private sector, the outside financial wealth takes the form of government IOUs. The private sector holds government currency, including coins and paper currency, as well as the full range of government bonds, short-term bills, longer maturity bonds as net financial assets, which is a portion of its, positive, of its positive net wealth. Net private financial wealth equals public debt in our clo in a closed economy without a foreign sector recall from, uh, recall from our discussion above that the accumulation of stocks requires flows. The private sector's accumulation of net financial assets over the course of a year is made possible only because its spending is less than its income over 
the same time. In other words, it has been saving. Uh, it has been saving, which enables it to accumulate a stock of wealth in the form of financial assets. In our simple example, uh, in our simple example, with only a public sector and domestic private sector, these net financial assets are government liabilities, government currency, and government bonds. These government IOUs, in turn, can be accumulated only when the government spends more than it receives in the form of taxes. Tax revenue. This is called the fiscal deficit, which is the flow of government spending less than the flow of government uh, and stock of government debt. Wait a minute. Flow of government tax revenue. Excuse me. Measuring the money of account of account over a given uh, period, usually a year. This deficit accumulates to a stock of government debt, which will be equal to the to the private sector's accumulation of financial wealth over the same period. A complete explanation of the process of government spending and taxation will be provided in, in Chapter 20. What it is necessary to understand at this point is that in our two-sector example, the net the net financial assets held by um, held by the private sector are exactly equal to the net financial liabilities issued by the government. And the government's spending always equals its tax revenue. The private sector net financial wealth would be zero. Uh, okay. There's uh, quite a bit of growth here. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, rest of the rest of world debts and domestic financial assets. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, still, still on at page 94. Uh, we're at the almost halfway mark, just so you know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so we're at the rest of the world debt and domestic financial assets. We can broaden our analysis by considering the financial assets and liabilities of the world, rest of the world. Thus, we now form three sec sectors in this open economy. A domestic private sector, wait, a domestic private sector, a domestic public sector, and a rest of the world sector that consists of foreign governments, firms, and households. In this case, it is possible for the domestic private sector to accumulate net financial claims on the rest of the world, even at the domestic public sector's spending uh, over the period of exact, uh, exactly equal is tax revenue. Domestic sectors accumulation of net financial assets is equal is equal to the rest of the world's issuer uh, issue of net financial liabilities. Finally, and more realistically, the domestic private sector can accumulate net financial wealth consistent or consisting of both domestic government liabilities and rest of the world liabilities. It is also possible for the domestic private sector in accumulation. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, it is also possible for domestic private sector to accumulate government debt, adding to its own financial wealth, while also issuing debt to the rest of the world, reducing its net financial wealth uh, and the non-financial wealth or real assets. One's financial asset is necessarily offset by another's financial liability. However, real assets represents uh, represent one's wealth that is not offset by another's liability. Uh, at, so at the aggregate level, net wealth equals the, the, the value of real non-financial assets. To be clear, you might have purchased an automobile by going into debt. Your financial liability, your car loan, is offset by the financial asset held by the auto loan company. Since that asset and uh, liability might uh, net z net to zero, what remains is the value of the real asset, the car, and most of the discussion that follows will be will be considered with financial assets and liabilities. 
but we will keep the the back of our minds that the value of real assets provides net finance financial assets and liabilities. But we will we will keep. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Um, private net financial asset liabilities. Okay, uh, but uh, wealth at both the individual level and at the aggregate level. Once we subtract. All financial liabilities from total assets, real and financial. We are left with non-financial real estate, uh, real assets, or aggregate net worth. 6.4, uh, integra integrating I NIPA stocks flows in the flow of funds accounts. The, sect the sectoral balance framework, which is derived from the national accounts framework, was Explored if sector uh, section. I always keep saying sector, in section six point two, and it it is uh, intrinsically linked to the flow of funds analysis. They are different but related ways of con uh, related ways of considering national economic activity. An early exponent of the flow of funds approach, which was uh, Lawrence Ritter. Um, uh, 1963, I guess he anyway, wrote that the flow of funds is a system of social accounting in which, in which A, the economy is divided into a number of sectors, and B, a source, uh, a, a sources and use of funds in statement is constructed by each sector. When all these sector sources and uses of funds statements are placed side by side, we obtain C, the flow of funds matrix for the economy as a whole. Thus, the flow of funds accounts uh, accounts allow us to link the balance sheet statement above stocks of financial and real net real net wealth to uh, to income statements state, statements about about yeah you know, about flows in a consistent fashion. In a monetary uh, econ uh, in the monetary economy, uh, uh, flows of expenditure measure the terms of the money of account uh, spent over a period involved in transactions between sectors uh, between sectors in the economy, which also have logistical or yeah logistical stock counterparts that it. That is flows flee, uh, feed stocks. The flow of funds accounts issue unsure that all the uh, ensure excuse me that all of these transactions are currently accounted for. This thinking underpins the the, the work of the so-called new Cambridge approach that the part that that was part of the Cambridge Economic Policy Group at the University of Cambridge in, uh, in the early 1970s. Uh, key members of this group were Martin uh, Featherstone, Wynne Godley, and Francis Cripps, all of whom were were of a Keynesian persuasion. While the sectoral balance approach had been understood much earlier, for example, by Nicholas Calder and others, it was popularized by the New Cambridge Macroeconomic Analysis, which Put the concept of net acquisition of financial assets or NAFA into the forefront of its Keynesian income expenditure model. Like Lawrence Ritter, the Cambridge economists was or uh, were interested in tracing the flow of funds between the different sectors of the economy, which they divided into the government sector, the private domestic sector, and the external sector. These transactions are recorded for a given period and each sector could record a financial deficit or surplus. We can rewrite equation 6.6 .6 as follows. 6.7, uh, savings equals investment uh, or minus investment equals NAFA uh, equals G uh, minus T uh, plus GAB, or CAB, which count on, uh, Anyways, S minus uh, I is the private yeah, sorry. Anyway, uh, see so private domestic finance uh, balance uh, of N or NF the financial balance or NAFA or NAFA, all of the private domestic sector 
the private and domestic sector is in financial surplus slash deficit when it's dispo when this disposable income or GNP uh, minus T exceeds less than exceeds less than its spending on consumption goods and investment goods. Consumption goods and investment goods. From a stock perspective, NAPA can also be measured by the difference between the private domestic sector stock of net financial assets at time T minus I and the stock uh, stock at time T to so if it's so if it T is 2017 T minus uh, I would be 2016. If G minus T uh, is less than zero, then the government's sector is spending less than it ta has taken out of the economy and taxation and undermining the capacity of the other two sectors to accumulate net financial asset by running surpluses and vice versa. Now, oh, current account balance. That's what the, that, that's what CAB, I was trying to figure that out earlier. I forgot all about that. Well, okay, so CAB is the external sector financial balance or the uh, current account balance. So I'm going to have to do a, a video at some point explaining like all of the different uh, things that I have read out to see the C, the G's, the T's, the I's, the stuff of that nature. Anyway, okay, so where the heck was I again? <laughs> it comprises the trade balance that is the difference between export and import revenue on goods and services and the net income flows that accrued to residents as a consequence of interest and dividends received on over on overseas ownership offset by similar payments to, uh, to foreigners. If the overall external sector balance is in deficit, then the national e economy is, uh, is issuing liabilities abroad or running down its net financial position in other ways, and foreigners are accumulating financial asset. Uh, are accumulating financial asset claims, there we go, and vice versa when the external balance is in surplus. Noting the stock slash flow distinction equals six, uh, equation 6.7 can be interpreted as meaning that if it is right handed, if its right hand side is positive, then government minus taxation plus count. Oh, wait, what tank is that? And CAB again. What? Oh, shoot. Uh, the current account balance, CAB, uh, is greater than zero. And the government sector, it's going to take me a while to remember that. Anyway, sector ba fiscal balance plus the current account balance jointly positive, then government minus taxation plus account balance. Again, I just said I was going to go take me a little bit to remember that. Current account balance is greater than zero, and the government sector fiscal balance plus the current account balance jointly uh, generates generate national income and additional net financial assets for the private domestic sector. Then NAFA uh, is greater than zero, which means that the private domestic sector is running a surplus and acquires new assets and or reducing its existing debt obligations. Conversely, if the government's and the government sector fiscal balance plus the current account balance is, is negative, which is a CAB, this would reduce the national income and undermine the capacity of the private domestic sector to net save and add to its stock of net financial assets. In this NAFA, uh, which is uh, if it's less than zero, so that the private or uh, yeah, anyway, less I guess less than zero, uh, so that so that the private domestic sector is running down its net financial position by borrowing from the other sectors and or by liquidating liquidating yeah uh, liquidating some of the stock of accumulated wealth. Equation 6.7 can also be written as 6.8, uh, which is savings minus uh, investments minus account of balance. Is that account balance? Shoot. Uh, <laughs> Current account balance, again, it's going to me a while, uh, minus government uh, spending minus taxation. When, where the term of the left-hand side 
savings minus investment minus uh again uh, uh, I keep in the current account balance that's why I call it CAB is the non-government sector financial balance and is of equal and opposite sign to the government financial balance G uh, government minus taxation. This is the this is this is the familiar MMT conclusion that a government sector deficit surplus is equal dollar for a dollar to the non-government sector surplus deficit. Importantly, transactions within the private domestic sector do not alter the net financial position of that sector overall. So, if a bank creates a loan for more for, for one of its customers, then its assets rise. But on the other side, the liabilities of the customer increase by an equal amount, leaving no change in the net position of the sector. The only way, only way the private domestic sector uh, can increase its net financial assets overall is through transactions with the government or external sector. For example, by acquiring a government bond or buying a foreign government bond or a foreign corporate bond. These two points are key MMT insights. Once we understand the interlinked nature of the three sectors, then it is simply or it is a simple step to realize that if one other sector must have reduced wait, oh shoot. And if one uh, sector has improved its position by the net acquisition of financial assets following a financial surplus, or at least one one uh, sector has improved its position by the net acquisition of the financial assets following a financial surplus, at least one other sector must have reduced its financial assets or run a fiscal or financial deficit. The two flows of funds framework all allow us to understand that the funds which a particular sector receives during a period from current receipts following selling the financial assets and running down cash balances has to or have to be equal to the total of its current expenditure, capital expenditure, debt, rep uh, debt repayments, uh, lending, and accumulating accumulation of cash balances. This approach clearly offer uh, clearly allows us to trace the uses and sources of funds for each sector. It should be emphasized that the flow of funds approach is based on accounting principles rather than being a behavioral theoretical framework for understanding why these flows occur nor do we gain any insights as to the adjustment process that govern the exchange in net financial assets in each sector. That caveat is, caveat is not to be taken as a criticism of the approach, but merely an observation of its restrictions. It also doesn't reduce the utility, uh, utility and insights that the approach provides. Often the, uh, economists like to den denigrate analysis doesn't reduce a uh, den denigrate analysis that manipulate accounting identities as being too lowbrow, but any approach is viable if it, it provides useful ways of thinking. Casual relationships. From the discussion above, it is clear that the non-government surplus is the same thing as saving flow uh, as a saving flow which leads to the net accumulation of financial assets. By the same token, a deficit reduces net financial wealth. If the, if the private, domestic, or external sectors run a deficit, it must either use financial assets that has accumulated by previous years when surpluses were run, or it must issue new IOUs to offset its deficits that is borrowed. Thus, the sector pays for its deficit spending by selling assets and reducing its bank, account, bank deposits or dis, or dis saving, or it borrows issues debt to obtain bank deposits. Once it runs, once it runs out of accumulated assets, it has no choice but to increase its uh, indebtedness every year that it runs a deficit. On the other hand, if the external or private domestic sector runs a surplus, then it will be accumulating net financial assets. 
This will take the form of financial claims on at least one or one of the other sectors. As we will discuss later, it is misleading to apply terminology such as deceiving or borrowing to the over sovereign government which issues the currency. While we have identified an accounting relationship between the sector balance uh, balances, we can also say something about. Oh wait, we could we can also say something about a casual relationship between the flows of income and expenditure, and the impact on stocks. Individual spending is mostly determined by income for individual uh, for the individual. It is plausible to argue that income determines spending because an in individual with no income is certainly going to be severely constrained when deciding to purchase goods and services. However, for reflection, it is apparent that even at the individual level, the link between income and spending is loose. Uh, is loose one can be spent can spend loose one can spend less than one's income accumulating net financial assets or one can spend more than one's income by issuing financial liabilities and thereby uh, becoming indebted still at the level of individual household or firm the, the direction of causation runs from income to its to spending even if the correspondence between the two flows is not perfect uh, deficits increase financial wealth. We can also say something about the direction of causation regarding accumulation of fi financial wealth at the level of the individual. If a household or firm decides to spend more than its income by running a deficit, it can issue liabilities to finance the additional pur purchases. Another household or firm will accumulate these liabilities as net financial wealth. Alternatively, they might allow the government to run a fiscal surplus. Of course, for this for this net financial wealth accumulation to take place, we must have a household or firm willing to deficit spend and another household firm or government willing to accumulate wealth in form of liabilities of that deficit spending or spender. It takes two to tango. However, the decision to deficit spend is the initiating is the initiating cause of the creation of net financial wealth. No matter how much others might want to accumulate financial wealth, they will not be able to uh, deficit spend unless it can sell some of the accumulate. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. uh, to, uh, to uh, accumulate assets or find someone willing to hold his liabilities, such as a bank through the creation of loan. In the case of several of a sovereign government, there is a special power, the ability to tax. The uh, guarantees that households and firms will want to accumulate the uh, government's debt. We conclude that while causation is complex, it tends to run from individual deficit spending to accumulation of uh, financial wealth, and from debt to financial wealth. And since the accumulation of a stock uh, of a uh, stock of financial wealth results from the surplus, that is from a flow of saving, we can also conclude that causation tends to run from deficit spending to saving. At the sector rather than individual level, the same principles apply. Thus. One sector cannot run a deficit with no, with none other sector with, but with, with the run the surplus. Uh, equivalently, we can. Uh, let me just kind of change something here. Hold on. There we go. Uh, we can say that some sector cannot issue debt if if no other sector will, is willing to accumulate the debt uh, instruments. At the aggregate level, taking the economy as a whole, causation is clear. Is clear. A society can uh, cannot decide to have more income, but it can decide to spend more. Further, all spending must be received by someone, somewhere, and as income. In other words, aggregate spending creates aggregate income. Fina finally. As discussed above, spending is not necessarily constrained by some, by income because it is possible for a household, firms, or government to spend more than income. Indeed, any of the three main sectors can run a deficit with at least one of the other running 
a surplus. However, it is not possible for spending at the aggregate level to, to be different from aggregate income since the sum of the sectoral balance must be zero. For all these reasons, we must, rever we must reverse causation between spending and income when we turn to aggregate level, while at the individual level, income causes spending. At the aggregate level, spending causes income. In MMT, we differentiate between horizontal and vertical transactions within the economy. Horizontal transactions occur between people and firms within the non-government sector, for example, purchases of goods and services borrowing from banks. Vertical transactions uh, occur between the government sector and the non-government sector, for example, government spending and taxation. Horizontal transactions do not add to the stock of net financial assets held by the non-government sector. Much of the debt issued within the sector will be held by others in the same sector. For example, if we look at the finances of the private domestic sector, we will find the most business debt is held by domestic firms and households. In the terminology we reduced, uh, we introduced above, this is inside debt, of which firms and households that run budget deficits, which is held as inside wealth by those households and firms that run budget deficit surpluses, Likewise, the, if households choose to deficit spend, that is, spend more than their flow of annual income, they may secure bank loans. In this case, the net asset pos position of the private sector is unchanged. These are horizontal transactions. Student loans may be privately financed or financed by the government. In both cases, th there is a horizontal trans transaction. If the domestic private sector takes a, takes as a tend, taking the, uh, as a whole spends more than its income, it must issue outside debt held as outside wealth, typically held by the foreign sector. However, the stock of net financial assets held by the non-government sector, or private domestic plus foreign, is again unchanged since these are horizontal transactions. The initiating cause of the private sector deficit is assumed to be a desire to spend more than income, so the causation mostly goes into deficits to, to, surpluses, to surpluses, wow, and from debt is net financial wealth. While we recognize that no sector can run a deficit unless another wants to run a surplus, this is not usually a problem because there is a propensity to net save financial assets. Vertical transactions add to the stock of net financial assets held by the non-government sector. On the other hand, assume that a fiscal deficit occurs because as a result of increased government spending and the simplicity of uh, the current account balance, there we go, find the guy, hopefully, is zero. Then the private sector achieves, achieves, achieves a net increase in its stock of financial assets. This transaction between the government and the private sector is referred to as a vertical transaction, and in this instance, it leads to an increase in set, in set net financial assets held by the non-government sector. On the other hand, if the government set, runs a surplus uh, by taking net spending out of the economy with the, uh, with the current account balance, again, bearing zero, of being zero, the net government sector, specifically, or sp yeah, specifically the, se the private sector, suffers a loss in its net holdings of financial assets. In this sector, or section, I keep saying sector, but when it comes to section, we demonstrate how a flow of funds approach to the analysis, uh, yeah, analysis of monetary transactions highlight both the importance of the distinction between vertical and horizontal transactions and the fundamental accounting nature of, of the so-called government budget constraints, or GDP, or GP, GBC. Identity, which, will, which we will refer to as the government fiscal constraints. Uh, 6.5, the balance sheets. Following Ritter, we can present a very simple generalized balance sheet which would imply or apply to any sector. As depict, uh, that's why I did sector section, uh, confused there. Anyway, 
as being depicted at, in the T accounts shown in uh, figure 6.6 by T account, we are referring to the set of financial records that, uh, that uses double entry bookkeeping. Zero points are worth noting. Real assets only appear on the balance sheet if, uh, of their owners. Financial assets are different to real assets because they represent the indebtedness of the other sectors. This means that they will, will, they will be matched by financial liability on, the, and on at least one other sector balance, sector's balance sheet. Financial asset denote monetary amounts owned by the sector, which, by the same logic as become or become before, excuse me, means that there will be a matching liability on at least one other balance sheet within the system. When we consider the monetary system as a whole, we conclude that financial assets, the financial liabilities, net to zero. That is, the, the total value of the financial assets equals the total value of the outstanding liabilities. This accounting tells us that the that for the overall economy, net worth equals the monetary value of the real assets in the economy. The balance sheet depicts stocks, but we can but we can easily see how it might provide us with information about flows. In the way that national accounts do, a stock is measured by measured at, at at a point in time, say the end of the year, whereas flows measure monetary transactions over a period uh, set a year. Say a year, excuse me. If we examine the difference between a balance sheet compiled at say 31 December 2017 and a balance sheet uh, compiled at December 31st, 2018, we will be able to repre represent the information in the balance sheet about, about assets, liabilities, and net worth as flow data. Consider 6.7 where the uh, there's a triangle, I think, uh, symbol, or uh, anyway, and it refers to a changes over the, uh, over the period concerned. Now, the entries to the T account denote uses and set, uh, sources of funds, that is, flows, over the period of interest. There are two components, are relates, uh, one relates to real assets and net worth and the other uh, to financial assets. A given sector, for example, household firm government, uh, government can be in, fact, in the first instance ob obtain, uh, obtain funds by increasing their liabilities through borrowing and reoccurring debt. They can apply those funds to accumulating uh, more financial assets, uh, or building cash balance. If we wanted to complain, uh, complain, we want to complain, if we want to comp comp complicate matters, we could uh, decompose, uh, decompose, deco yeah, decompose um, the three categories, I'll just say, the AFA, AM, and AL, I'll just say it that way, uh, Further, by recognizing that a given sector can also sell existing financial assets or run down cash balances to obtain a new fund. Similarly, it might use funds to reduce liabilities to pay down debts, thus the entries to uh, uh, figure 6.7 and to be considered uh, as net transactions. The second source and use of funds for our sector relates to changes in real assets. Uh, and the change in net worth uh, over a given period. In the National Accounts Framework, or see Chapter 4, we consider the division between the capital account and the current account, where the former related to the investments to productive capacity in the latter, but refer, refer to the current spending and the income. The capital account measured transactions which can, which sorry, which change the real assets held and the net worth of the economy. We, what, what do we mean by a change in real assets? And other, in, in the national accounts, we considered gross capital formation or investments which is defined as expenditure on productive capital goods, for example, plant and equipment factories. This is 
a use of funds for firms in the current period. Depreciation represents the difference between gross and national and in our net investment. For now, uh, though, we abstract from the real world complexity of depreciation. Finally, we consider the change in net worth for a sector in a given period to be res residual after all the uses and sources of funds have been ac accounted for. From an accounting, stamp uh, accounting perspective, net worth is equal to the difference between total asset and total liability. It follows that a change in net worth over the period of interest is equal to the difference between the change in total assets and the change in total liabilities. If total assets decreased by more, de uh, more decreased by less, then total liabilities increase, decrease, then the net worth of the sector has risen. Another way of thinking about the change uh, in net worth, which is a flow of funds, it is to it is funds is to link it to these national accounts concept of saving. In the in the national account framework, we consider household saving, for example, to be the difference between consumption, a use, and disposable income, a source. This concept generalizes with caution to the statement that the surplus of sector is the surplus of a sector is the difference between its current revenue and its current expenditure. What happens to the flow of surplus funds? If the current flow of income is greater than the current expenditure, then at the end of the period, the sector would have accumulated increased stock of total net assets by increasing the actual assets held and or reduced liability owed. The surpluses between current income and current expenditures must be matched dollar for dollar by an increase in the stock of total net assets. We have already discussed total net assets above, but in different terms. We define the change in net worth over a period as the difference between the change in total assets and the change in the total liabilities. That difference is exactly equal to the surplus of your current income over current expenditure. Thus, from an accounting perspective, we can consider savings to be the change in net worth over a period. Figure 6.7, however, only implicitly includes the current account transactions, the flow of current income and expenditure since we define the change in net worth R and W to be the uh, difference between the two current flows. The simplicity of 6.7 is that it shows that if a sector is a uh, running uh, is running a deficit, that it is spending more than it earn than it is earning, or in the parlance used above, it is investing more than it's saving. Then it must obtain the deficit funds from its available sources. Increased borrowing, uh, which is greater than zero, running a cash balance, which is uh, lower than zero, selling as existing financial assets under zero, selling existing real assets under zero. More generally, a given sector, for example, household firm government may be running a deficit, but could choose to reduce their liability uh, by running down their stocks of financial assets, real assets, or cash balances. Clearly, there is an infinite number of combinations of changes in liabilities and changes in the holdings of the different types of assets, but overall total assets minus total liabilities net worth has declined. Uh, conversely, a sector that is running a surplus that is spending less than its earning or in the parlance used above it is uh, used above it, it is investing less than a saving must be using must be using surplus funds to repay debt, build up cash balances, increases financial assets or increasing lending, increases real assets. More generally, a given sector, for example, a household firm or government may be running a surplus but could 
choose to obtain additional funds by increasing his liability by borrowing or incurring, uh, and incurring debt. He can apply on those funds to accumulate more financial assets or building cash balances. Again, there is an, inf there is an infinite number of inf combinations of changes in liability and changes in the holdings of the different the different types of assets, but overall, total asset minus li total liabilities and net worth has increased. And I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. And if you have uh, grace, uh, if you have uh, followed me so far, please continue. Uh, it gets better and better and better every time I read this stuff. So uh, again, please subscribe. Please comment. Hit the hit the you know hit the like button. Um, comment and hit the bell. Anyway, so let's see. Page one hundred. And if we wanted to complicate matters, we would de decompose uh, F, A, M, and L, which I forget what the heck those actually stand for, but anyways, I think, think financial assets, money, and liabilities, I think it's called. Um, they all have like the uh, rectangle uh, uh, symbol um, uh, on it, which I can't remember what the heck that stands for, but whatever. Uh, again, I'll be doing a separate video to explain all this stuff if I can. Anyway, furthermore, by recognizing that a given sector may sell some financial assets, buy new financial assets, similarly, it may ref uh, re refinance by taking on new liabilities when existing liabilities need to be repaid. So the, ent the entries in uh, figure 6.7 are to be considered as net transactions. We, are, we also have to be cautious in our terminology when considering the different sectors. If we are considering members in the household sectors then, or sector, then it is clear that if they spend less they, than their income and the, thus save, they are deferred current consumption in the hopes are in the hope that they will be able to com command greater consumption in the future period. The increase in their net worth provides, to, provides for increased future consumption for the household. Similarly, for the for a business firm, if it is spending less than it is earning, we can we consider it to be retaining earnings, which is a source of funds to the firm in the future. In su uh, summary, net worth for a sector in a given period is the res res residual. I was going to say re residue, residual uh, uh, after all the uses and the sources of funds have been accounted for. From an accounting perspective, net worth is equal to the difference between the total assets and total liabilities. And it, it follows that a change in net worth over the period of increase of interest is equal to the difference between the change in total assets and the change in total liabilities. If total assets increase by more or decrease by less, then total liabilities increase or decrease than uh, the net worth of the sector has uh, risen. We consider the private domestic sector as a whole, the sum of the households and firms to be saving overall and in total investment by firms is less than total saving by households. From the national accounts, we consider that households save and firms invest. However, in the case of government sectors, such as terminology would be misleading. If the government spends less than it takes out of the government uh, non-government sector in the form of taxation, we say it is running a fiscal surplus. A fiscal deficit occurs when its spending is greater than its taxation revenue. But a fiscal surplus does not increase the capacity of the sovereign country or sovereign government to spend in the future in the same way that a surplus or saving increases the capacity of households to spend in the future. 
reminder box. As we saw in Chapter 1, the sovereign currency issuing government faces no intrinsic financial constraints and can only at time purchase however, whatever it is for sale in the currency that it issues. Its capacity to do uh, to do so is not influenced by its past spending or revenue patterns. And 6.8 provides the most comprehensive framework for analysis or analyzing, excuse me, the flows of a function or funds, excuse me, because it brings together the current transactions, income expenditure, the financial asset uh, transactions, and the capital transaction that we have dealt with in, earlier. The capital and financial transactions are captured in changes in changes to the balance sheet 6.6 figure. Uh, note that we will talk about the sovereign government. We are excluding the levels of government that do not use the currency. State and local governments are more uh, more likely more like households or firms in their respect, although they do have the capacity to tax and issue fines. The transactions above the dotted line comprise the income statement and record record current expenditure or uses. The balancing turn, uh, balancing item above the dashed line cons constituents cons constitutes, excuse me, constitutes the change in net worth or yeah, net worth or saving. The changes in the balance sheet are shown below the dashed line, and the balancing item is balancing item is once again the changes in net worth. You can see that we could cancel out the change in net worth because it is the balancing item in both the item uh, income, excuse me, statement and the change in the balance sheet. This would leave us with the accounting statement that source that the sources of funds to sector through current. Oh wait, let me just yeah. Uh, uh, wait a minute, because of the balancing item. Okay. Mm -hmm. Change the balance sheet. This would uh, this would us leave with the accounting uh, statement the so, uh, the sources of funds to a sector through current income borrowing must be used for current expenditure, investment, lending, and or building up cash balances. Let's see. I think I was see. Dash. Okay, I thought I, I thought I was reading something there, but apparently I, was, I wasn't reading it correctly. Anyway, what's new? Uh, da da da. The that's me letting in. Okay, yeah, I've already read that part. The six point six, the flow of funds matrix, and the T accounts uh, tracing the the sectoral sources and uses of funds can be summarized uh, for all on uh, for all sectors in the economy by the flow of fun, funds of funds of funds transaction match, matrix. A stylized version of which is shown on uh, in Figure six point nine, the overriding accounting rule that governs this the presentation of the flow of funds account is that for the economy as a whole and for each sector in the economy, the total resort the, the total sources of funds must be equal to the total uses of funds. Oh wait. Uh, total uh, accounts is, is that for the economy as a whole and for each sector in the economy, the total the total sources of funds must be equal to these total uses of funds. Okay, I got that right. Just want to make sure to skip, skip a line. Remember that sources of funds provided by the various uh, sectors in the economy are used by those sectors. And figure 6.9, taken from Ritter in 1963, shows three sectors in the total economy. At the total aggregate level, the, the three sectors could be uh, the private domestic sector, the government sector, and the external sector. For each period being accounted for, the st statistician would rec record the flows of the funds that are related to each of the row categories in the matrix. Most importantly, we have learned that, there, that for every deficit sector, which saves less than invest, there has been offsetting surpluses in at least one other sector. Uh, Ritter in, 96, in 1963, to, uh, 2028, and I'm really sure that's maybe the page of the book news reading part he wrote. Anyway, describes the result as 
an interlocking self-contained system which shows for a for for a specific or specified time time period the balanced sources and uses of uses of funds statement for each sector the interrelations among the sectors and the aggregate totals of savings investment lending hoarding and borrowing for the economy as a whole in the other sector may invest more or less than it saves or borrow more or less than it lends however for the economy as a whole saving must necessarily Equals investment and borrowing must equate or equal lending plus supporting. Thus, the deficit sector, which saves less than invests, must be offset by at least one other surplus sector to net the flows to zero. What are the advantages of presenting uh, economic data in this way? Various practical uses can be made of the, uh, the information provided in the flow of funds account. Same. They provide information of all financial flows within the economy on a sector by sector basis. They allow researchers and policymakers to under understand how fund flows, funds flow from uh, any other sector through the banking system and on to the final users by, for example, firms engaged in productive investment. They all they, they allow researchers and policymakers to monitor major econ economic trends, such as the changing indebtedness of the sectors of the econ in the economy and the sources of funding for the respective sectors. For example, an, an understanding of the flow or of funds accounts would have indicated that. Are indicated the growing indebtedness of the private sector prior to the GFC, and the perhaps, and perhaps alerted policymakers to the likely financial instability arising from it. They allow researchers to study savings patterns or saving patterns in the economy and show us where the savings of a sector and being de deployed. The accounts can tell us which sectors are accumulating surpluses or deficits and the division between financial and, re and real assets. They also allow us to understand the understand patterns of gross capital formation. They permit researchers to examine the dynamics of such concepts as household uh, wealth. We can learn uh, how household balances she's changed over time and how they, that, that wealth is composed. For example, one of the uh, hallmarks of the period leading up to the GFC in many countries was the shift in household wealth to riskier categories such as share purchases, uh, uh, purchases sources uh, sourced from marginal loans, the shift in importance to overall wealth from more secure home mortgages to more risky sources of wealth was significant because it exposed the, the economies to an increased risk of financial as instability. Central banks used the flow of funds accounts to help them estimate the sensitivity of the economy to changes in the, uh, in the availability of credit. Flow of funds accounts and the national accounts. The flow of funds accounts uh, complement the national accounts and the balance of payments ac accounts, which are produced by national st st statistical, st statistical there we go, agencies on a regular basis as a way of measuring ec economic activity in total and across the broad economic sectors. We will consider the balance of payments accounts in Chapter 24, there are uh, important differences between the flow of funds accounts and national accounts, which can be summarized as the national accounts contain no data pertaining to financial transactions, borrowing, lending, or changes in cash balances. Only non-financial transactions are measured. The flow of funds accounts fill that void. The national accounts focus on the current flows of final, final expenditure, output, and income, as we saw and from the calculations of final expenditure, the flow of funds accounts allow us to trace transactions involved, involved and uh, involving assets that have been created in past periods. 
Oh, wait, I think I missed one. Uh, we saw in chapter four transactions that involve so-called uh, double account, double counting, or in intermediate transactions are excluded from the calculation of final uh, of final expenditures. The flow of funds account allow us to raise uh, to trace transactions involving assets that have been created in past periods. Okay, so I, I just skipped a line that time with that and got it. The structure of the national accounts in su is such that is such that a consumer durable durable expenditure is included under current expenditure when uh, conceptually it uh, conceptually it should be it, it should be considered as investment activity in the flow of funds accounts. All sectors can invest and save. Conclusion. We begin this we, we began this chapter with a discussion of stocks and flows and then introduced the concept of a uh, sectoral balance we should we, we showed how a sector uh, net and sector's net income flows are related to the to its accumulation of financial assets and liabilities and how one sector's balance are uh, interrelated interrelated to another's balances Finally, we introduce balance sheets used into account uh, used to account for individual account uh, economic entities uses as sources of funds. We have seen through the chapter how the sectoral balance framework and the accounting structures that underpin it empower us to fact check the inter internal uh, logic of arguments made by politicians and media com uh, commentators about such things as government and private debt re, uh, re, retrenchment. This framework alone uh, does not allow us to determine the, the, valid, the validity of political, uh, politically driven pronouncements, such as austerity measures will stimulate growth. At this point, we also need to apply theory, but we can and should still use the sectoral balance framework to draw macroeconomic uh, inferences about how sectoral balances will re respond to the imp imposition of imposition of austerity. So it is a, so if a politician says that the government and non-government sectors should simultaneously reduce their net uh, indebtedness, increase increase their net wealth by running surpluses, then we know that there is not uh, there is that it is not possible unless the current account surplus grows. In other words, the politician who advocates belt tightening by both the domestic private sector and the government sector is, in order to reduce indebtedness must also explain how, uh, their plan to induce foreigners to increase their own indebtedness to make this possible. We don't know, uh, we don't have to, res uh, to resort to a theory to draw the, these conclusions or a source of conclusions. <sighs> Uh, let's see. End note. Such a policy prescription was advocated by Greece in 2012 and beyond in order to reduce both government and private indebtedness. However, the uh, triaca that pushed the policy never admitted that this could not happen unless countries like Germany increased their own indebtedness by running current account deficits against Greece. I personally have always found that those who speak are uh, commentators on different uh, platforms. They have an inherent uh, monetary value to what they're saying, how they're saying it. So this is the reason why I'm reading the textbook on macroeconomics. And this is why I'm trying to make it clear uh, that you should never really take what they say uh, to heart. And pretty much a lot of times you do the opposite, and you may actually fare better that way than to listen to their advice. Anyways, uh, thank you again for listening for as long as you have. Uh, I hope you continue to listen. I hope you continue to learn with me as I learn the cores of modern monetary theory uh, brought to you by, again, by uh, Martin Watts, by L. Randall Ray, who is coming out with another book. I just, like, remember, I can't figure out what, what the name of it is yet. I will be asking several people uh, today, and also uh, William, uh, also known as Bill uh, Mitchell. Uh, thanks for listening, uh, watching the, the screen there, and uh, please subscribe, please uh, share, comment, hit the like button, and hit the bell. Uh, and I'd like to thank my, uh, my newest subscribers, 
that I have accumulated over the last since I since I started this. And uh, thank you for setting uh, this uh, YouTube channel on a hopefully a long path of um, rating this kind of stuff and growing also uh, with you uh, in regards to macroeconomics. Peace out for now, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I will be doing. Uh, chapter 7, uh, Methods, Tools, and Techniques. Um...